So Jojo, your fans have been asking, when are you going to do another video? And this will be the second video that you're doing with me. The first one was the experiment where we pretended if we threw the rock out the boat, will the water go up, down, or stay the same? And this one's a little bit different. It still deals with water, but I took you and your friends out there and we said, let's go measure the flow in this roadside ditch. And when we're measuring flow, what we're really trying to figure out is how many boxes that are one foot by one foot by one foot or one cubic foot, how many of those would we fill in one second? So what are some of the things that we would need to think about if we're going to go out there and measure flow? How big is the channel and how fast is it flowing? That's right. So that first measurement that you're talking about is how about how big the channel is. That's called area and we measure that in square feet. Now the flow was low during this time period and so I think that this shape is probably representative of the the flow area and what is that shape? A rectangle. It's a rectangle and if the flow was higher then we would have to take into account these slopes here and measure these triangles. And, and what shape is this? A trapezoid. A trapezoid, that's right. So it looked more like a trapezoidal channel as opposed to a rectangular channel. But we wanted to keep it simple, so we measured it while it's low. And I think that this rectangle is a pretty good representation. So I wanted to take a look at some of the notes that you took while you were out in the field. And by the way, I love the hearts and the smiley face. I think that those are really good for putting your field notes. Now, I wanted to take a look at this. And here you have a second test, which meant that it was just the second place that we went to to try to do this. And do you remember what the problem was with the first place that we went? There was too much vegetation to get a measurement. That's right, that's right. The other thing is that I notice is that you talk about that you're in front of a bridge. And you remember what that bridge was? The bridge was a board across the ditch. Yeah, they had a board across the ditch. And we didn't put it there, but it was somewhat helpful to, to have that there. And so we took our measurements just in front of that. Now, this is your um, schematic and you put your measurements on here and what is this measurement called Do you remember the width that's right and so we took a few different measurements and we seem to be pretty consistent we were around 40 or 41 inches and do you remember what that measurement is called the depth the depth that's right so here you say that it's about eight and a half to nine inches so that's our width that's our depth. Now I need to convert those inches to feet, so I divide them by 12 and I get 3.33 feet for the width and 0.75 feet for the depth. And then when I multiply those two to get the area, I get 2.5 square feet. Now the next measurement that we wanted to take is the velocity or how fast the water is flowing. Now here's you, you're taking your notes and I noticed that you have a ruler or a tape measure next to you. And do you remember how far we pulled this, this tape measure? 10 feet. 10 feet. And uh, I noticed also that you're, you're standing in the leaves, and so we would throw the leaves in the water. And do you remember what we were doing um, when we were throwing the leaves in the water? We timed how long it took the leaves to move 10 feet. To move 10 feet, that's right. So these are the measurements that you took. And I think at this point you are probably getting hungry because I see that you have some donuts drawn in the notes here. And you took five measurements. And it looks like that you had a range from 8 seconds to 11 seconds. And so we want to take the average of those. Well, also we want to make sure that None of the measurements look really different than, than the others, and these are, seem to be all reasonable. So what we do is we add up the five measurements, and then we divide by five. And I know you're just getting into division now, um, and you use the matrix form for division. And so what we do is we take these sets of five until we get to 46, and then we count how many sets of five you have. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20. 30, 35, 40, 45, and so we're almost there, and we have one left over. 
And so do you remember how many sets of five this is? I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, so you had one. nine and then one left over. So that tells me that it's between nine and ten seconds. So when we compute it, the average time was 9.2 seconds. Why is it not 9.1 1 seconds? Well, because actually, well, you haven't really gotten to the fractions of the decimal, but actually this represents 1 divided by 5, which gives you 0.2. That's a good question. Um, and you'll learn more about that when you start working with fractions and decimals. So your average velocity is the distance divided by the time. So you take your 10 feet that we measured and divide it by your average time of 9.2 seconds and you get an average velocity of 1.1 feet per second. Now when we figure out the flow we just do area times velocity so that's the 2.5 square feet times 1.1 feet per second and your flow comes to 2.75 cubic feet per second which means that for every second that passes, you're filling almost three of those one foot by one foot by one foot boxes. Now, what you did was the float method, and we got this from, from this source. Now, Jojo, here in the float method, it says that we should choose a hundred foot section of the ditch, but we only chose 10 feet. Can you tell everybody why we did not choose a hundred foot section? Did not have a good 10, 100 foot, what is this word? Section. Section. There you go. Yes, yeah, so we uh, do write the answers down for JoJo to help her on her videos. So uh, that's right. So we, we really couldn't find a good uniform 100 foot section to use. So we improvised and used a 10 foot section. Now, um, also it talks about a float, you know, so they, they talk about using tennis balls, apples, oranges. Now, we did have a plastic bottle, but I didn't want to throw the plastic bottle in the stream because we didn't really know if we could retrieve it. And we had leaves available to us, so we just decided that we were going to throw leaves in there and use leaves to uh, measure the velocity. It does say to do five to ten tries, and again, we did our five tries. So, um, Jojo, what is one of the things that you noticed when we threw the leaves into the water? What did you notice? Because we threw a bunch of leaves in all at once. And what did you notice about the leaves that were closer to the bottom? The leaves closer to the bottom moved slower. Yeah, so they were moving slower than the ones at the top. And there actually is a reason for that. And so right now I drew a, a rectangular channel and I put an X right in the middle, right, right at the surface and right in the middle of the channel. And as you move down in the channel, it tends to move slower and it's because you're starting to encounter friction from the bottom. And also as you move out towards the banks from that point, it'll also tend to move slower because once again, you're encountering friction. So typically, uh, what you'll find is that your fastest velocity is near the top. And because of that, if you're only measuring at the top, there's a coefficient that they say that you should apply um, depending on the depth in order to be able to get the average velocity. In this case, they say that you should use a coefficient of 0 0.66. Now, some of these leaves were wet, so I don't know if they really stayed at the surface, so I'm not actually sure. Um, if I got the surface velocity. So what we're going to do is what's called a sensitivity analysis to kind of get a range of what the values could be. And so this was without the adjustment. This is the computation we just saw, and that was almost three cubic feet per second. But if we take the adjustment and we add and we multiply it times the 0.66, then it reduces it to 1.8 cubic feet per second. So we're in this range of two to three cubic feet per second. But we're not professionals. You know, we just went out there, you know, with, um, you know, a, a little bit of equipment and did the best that we could do. So, Jojo, what if a professional went out there and they measured two cubic feet per second? How would you feel about our measurements and their measurements? I'd feel good. Okay. Now, what if they got four cubic feet per second? 
I feel not as good. Not as good because it's above the range that we got. And so we probably want to get a little bit more information from them to find out, well, you know, did you have a better me measure of area or did you have um, maybe a better measure of the velocity? Maybe we're a little bit low on our velocity. Now, what if the professional came back with 50? What would you think of their measurement? Their measurement is probably wrong. Yeah, I would agree. And the reason why we say that is because we know that our measurement of area is probably not too far off. In order to get 50, then you would have to have a velocity that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 feet per second, which means that um, in order to get 20 feet per second, anything that we threw in the water would have traveled that 10 feet in about half a second. Um, and, you know, we could tell by looking that that wasn't going to be possible. So, again, that, it's good to always, you know, think logically about that to determine whether or not the answer actually makes sense. So, Jojo, I want to thank you for helping me participate in this video. And uh, hopefully we will be doing more of these videos. They probably will focus on water. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching this video.